Good morning. Happy Friday. I hope that you brought some coffee or tea or, I don't know, a Bloody Mary. Why not? It's Friday, you guys. YOLO. It's the end of 2016. Let's take it out with a bang, right? <laughs> Let's make it count. Oh, I really want a Bloody Mary. That sounds really good. Or what is, is that, that's not the breakfast thing, is it? Is it? Yeah, I think it is. All right, anyway, so let's focus. So I met with one of my girlfriends, another one of my coaches yesterday, and she was she was like, I need help with, with like what you do every day to, have, to be positive and to have success in your life. And I don't know what to, where to start. And so it made me think, I'm like, that's a really good question because for a long time I struggled. I was on the struggle bus, past party of one. And um, I finally, I listened to this talk a long time ago and I had so many ahas and so I kind of have applied it to my life. So I'm going to share the things I do every single day that give me traction in my life and make me feel like at the end of the day, I've won it. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Sarah. I am a health and happiness coach and I live in Yuma, Arizona. It is the lettuce capital of the world. So if you're eating lettuce or spinach right now, you're welcome. It came from Yuma. It's very sunny here. So anyways, I'm a mom of three. And for a long time, I was really, really uncomfortable in my skin, and I gained a whole bunch of weight because I was, like, officially breeder status, and I pumped out a whole bunch of babies, and I lost myself. I lost myself, and I was on this hamster wheel of Dora the Explorer and breast milk, and, like, I just was a train wreck, and I was angry and sad, and I ate my feelings, and then something magical happened. I decided that I actually mattered, that I wasn't just mommy. I was Sarah, and I was a person, and I needed to put my own needs and my own self first to teach my kids a valuable lesson. See what happens when you flip it? It's not selfish, right? It's all about teaching them a lesson and essentially just paving the way for them to grow into strong women who aren't, you know, just martyrs and mommies and stuff like that. This matters, right? So so now that I've kind of figured it out, I'm still a work in progress. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better every single day. I it's my passion to help other women, especially on their journey, on their on their just trying to figure it out, right? Trying to get better every single day. So I pop in here every Friday and I share a little bit about what is helping me rock my life because that's what this is all about. We should be rocking our life and living our best life. You can't just wait for your best life to show up. That's not how it happens. That'd be awesome if you could like go to a vending machine and just hit, you know, B7. I want an awesome life. It doesn't happen, you guys. We have to like actually take action in our life and show up and do the hard, uncomfortable things sometimes to get those victories in our life. Super crazy how that works. So anyways, back to what we're talking about today. Rituals that I do every single day to rock my life. And let, I'm not going to be all like super, you know, Susie Sunshine here. Like, life can be hairy and sometimes I don't win my day. But I want to win my day and most of the days I'm pretty successful at it. So here's what I do. I listened to this talk once upon a time and he was talking about how you know, life is crazy and things get in the way and we have, especially if you're a parent or you work or whatever, like there's so many different things that, that take our, that take our focus and take our attention. And there's so many things to get done and it's impossible to get everything done. Like you could be trying to be super, super human, but it's just not going to happen, right? So think about the few things that you need to get done to accomplish so that you feel at the end of the day, you've won your day. Control your controllables. I can't control the outside world, but I can control my little world. I can control my attitude and my reaction. And I can go out and I can say, set my intention and say, these are the things I have to get done so that I know I won my day, right? So think about those things. That's going to be your call to action at the very end of this is to sit down with yourself and your coffee or your Bloody Mary or whatever it is and think about what do you need to win your day. So for me, I start simple, start small, right? You can't start with these big grand gestures because that's how we all get derailed and get discouraged and then we're like, screw it, this is way too complicated. So I start small. Every single morning, I started doing this and this has made a big difference. I wake up and first thing I do, before I even turn on my bedroom light, is crazy. I make my bed. <gasps> I make my bed. I make my bed. I smooth the covers. I put the pillows on. I put the fluffy pillow that my husband's like, this is stupid. Why do we need fluffy pillows? It's happiness, man. I like my little decorative pillows. I put them on the bed so that there, I've checked a box. I've already had success in my day and I haven't even left my bedroom. I make my bed because studies show people who make their beds get so much more done. Isn't that weird? Right? Your mom used to always lecture you. Make your bed. Make your freaking bed. I guarantee you, you're going to have this like sense of accomplishment. It's really weird how something so simple can start your day off on such a great note. So I make my bed. The next thing I do is I put on my workout clothes. I do because it's so easy to gaff that. And I found for me moving my body every single day, not running a freaking 10K, not going to CrossFit, just moving my body every single day 
helps me with my sanity and helps me feel like I have control over something. So I do, I put my workout clothes on so I have no excuses, right? Because it's, otherwise I'll take a shower and I'll put on makeup and I'll do my, like I'll put on normal clothes and then I'm like, well, I don't want to get, I don't want to get changed. It's so easy to come up with excuses. And so this is one of the ways I've eliminated that excuse. I make my bed, I put on my workout clothes, end of story. So those are my first two things I do. Super easy, right? It's not going to like challenge you in any way and it's just setting your day up for success. Let's see, what's my third one? Um, I make the bed. Oh, so then I go into my kitchen. This is so weird. It's so weird to tell you guys. I feel like you're like little peeping toms peering my window in the morning. I have, like for a long time, I didn't, I wasn't good with my water and I would try and drink coffee and pass that off as water, but it doesn't work that way, right? Like you need water. Your body is made out of water and if you're dehydrated, it's gonna affect your energy. It's gonna give you headaches. Like you're probably gonna be hungrier. It's funny how your body tells you you're hungry when you're really just dehydrated. And so living here in Yuma, when it's like 120 degrees half the year or a month or two anyways, it's really important to get my water in. So. I got these giant ball jars, nothing fancy. Um, I think I actually got it at like Michael's or something. It's a huge ball jar. And so I fill that up with water first thing and it sits on my counter and that's what I start to fill like my water bottles or whatever, my cups of water. I fill it out of there. So it's a really easy, quick at a glance. At the end of the day, I can look at it and be like, did I drink my water? No, I didn't. And so some nights I'm standing over the sink like a frat boy chugging, like I'm chugging my water, but I always know that I got that bare minimum of water. So as I'm out and about, I'll probably top on my water somewhere else or go to, at Starbucks. I always get the water. Something about the green straw makes water taste better. I don't know what it is, but um, I always do that. And so that's another victory, drinking my water. It's so simple. It's so simple, but it's such an important thing for us to do. And I'm talking about water. I'm not talking about iced tea. I'm not talking about Gatorade. I'm not talking about anything else, just water. And I also kind of have a rule of myself, like if I'm going to have a drink or if I'm going to have an excessive amount of coffee, I have to chase it with water. And then I don't feel so bad, right? Plus, I feel better. Like a frat boy. Totally. Um, okay, so I do that. And then I, usually by then my kids are awake, I'm starting to feed them, and I always get on Facebook. I get on Facebook or I get on Instagram, and I try and scroll for something inspirational. Or I'll look at my old, my, my feed and like the memories, like what you posted on this day. I usually have something that, that's motivational. So I look at that, and I, I'll think about that for a hot second. I check in with my challenge groups and cheer those ladies on on their journey. Um, and then I, I, as the day progresses, I turn on some PD. So I'm a huge personal development fan. If you don't know what that means or you're new to it, check it out. It could be a podcast. It could be like talk radio. It could be a book on audio. It could be, I don't know, it could be anything. But it's something that's positive, something that fills you with hope and inspiration, it's not like the news. You don't wanna hear about people shooting each other. You don't wanna hear about the freaking economy. This is stuff that's for you. This is stuff that's gonna fill your cup and make you feel positive and optimistic because yeah, the world is chaotic and yeah, there's a lot of ugly out there and yeah, we could all choose to focus on that. But at the end of the day, is that gonna help you feel good? Is it gonna help you feel excited and empowered and optimistic or is it gonna make you feel run down and beat up? And so the world beats us up. It's just, this is life, whatever. No reason to cry over it, but you get to choose what you t what you fill yourself with. You get to choose that. You're the driver of your bus. So for me, personal development is what was the big catalyst in changing my attitude from this negative Nancy ice pick dream killer to, you know what? Life is exciting and there's so many big things that can happen and I'm open to receiving it. So I actually uh, subscribe to XM Radio in my car, and so as I'm driving, doing errands, or taking kids to school, or whatever, I can listen to positive talk on there. I personally love Joel Osteen. He's been such a game changer for me because he's all about positivity and affirmations, and I'm a huge affirmation lover. So if you don't love affirmations, that's another, or you haven't tried affirmations, this is another thing to put on your list. Come up with some affirmations. You don't have to do this every single day, but once you have your affirmations, I like to write them on a piece of paper, and if I'm really struggling in my life, and I don't really know what to put, whatever it is I'm struggling with, like if I'm feeling really broke or I'm feeling really stressed, I flip it, and that becomes my affirmation. So I feel organized. I feel at peace. I am excited about my life. I am a saver. I am um, I'm a lender, not a borrower, like all those things, whatever it is I'm struggling with, I flip it the opposite. You know, I'm a strong, confident woman, whatever. If you're a guy, maybe you don't want to put that on there. It's kind of like that Friends episode. <laughs> Do you remember that? My friends, people. Anyways, I think it was Chandler or someone was trying to stop smoking. Anyways, 
back to my original point. So I put those in places I see. Like I have them in my, in my car. I'll put them on my phone. I have it on my fridge. I have it on my bathroom mirror. I even got a chalk pen. You can get them super cheap at um, Walmart. They're super. They're cheaper at Walmart than anywhere else. And I'll write on the kids' bathroom mirror. I'm going to start doing that again. Note to self. I'm going to put that on my to-do list. Just positive things. Like I'm a good friend. I am kind. I am brave. I can do it. I am smart. Whatever it is you need to tell yourself. Do your affirmations and make that part of your daily ritual. It doesn't have to take up like 20 minutes. It's a quick thing. And the more, the more you do it, the more you're just reprogramming your mind because it's, we're all programmed most likely with a lot of negativity because that's what the world puts out. And you've got to find your people. You've got to find your positive vibe tribe that helps you see life is good. We are so freaking fortunate and blessed and you just have to change. You have to choose your life view. You get to choose that. So affirmations and listening to personal development is something else I do every single day to win my day. Um, there's also Darren Hardy. He is awesome. I love Darren Hardy. He talks a lot to entrepreneurs and he's just really inspirational. He's a person who kind of a rags to riches story and he's just a great person. Like He's all about helping other people become their best. Tony Robbins is another one. But um, Darren Hardy, you can actually sign up for text messages or emails. And I get like in morning, every morning I get a text from Darren Hardy. And it's like a really quick little story or something about, it's a, like a little lesson. And it's not dry. I don't like dry stuff. Like I need fun. I need fun. Otherwise I get distracted like a squirrel, right? So I love Darren Hardy. I love Joel Osteen. Um, Tony Robbins is super awesome. I, I'm totally putting that on my bucket list. I'm going to go see Tony Robbins live. I'm, I, I love him. So there's lots of different things out there. If you need a book recommendation, you know I love the energy bus. I also have a personal development book club that you're invited to join. Every month we do one book. and So it's not like overwhelming. It's not like one more thing on your to-do list. It's just one book a month, right? To make you better every single day. Um, so that's my affirmations, my personal development. My other thing is my to-do list. And this is something that I get away from. And whenever I do get away from it, I feel super stressed out. So I'm focusing on it. I'm getting back to basics, which is my to-do list. And so I've tried apps on my phone. I've tried um, pen to paper. And pen to paper just pen to paper just works so great for me. So um, I have just, I got like a 98 cent notepad thing at Walmart and I just put my to-do list and it's small enough and light enough I can throw it in my bag and it goes everywhere with me and I will even put simple things on here like laundry or take out chicken to thaw like simple stuff that a could get away from me possibly but b it helps me feel like my day has purpose and I'm getting stuff done I'm checking it off like a boss it's not like I'm a victim to my day and the hamster wheel and all the different things I'm in charge here and I put it on my list and then I check it off like a boss. All right. So some of you guys are asking questions. Okay. So my chalk pen, I find it at Walmart. I looked around at all the different craft stores and they were kind of expensive. I got a super cheap one at Walmart. Anna Taylor wants to know what XM cha channel do I listen to? Well, actually I listen to the Joel Osteen channel. It's channel 128. And it's so funny because, um, the girls take the bus now, but for a long time I was driving them all everywhere. And so we would all listen to it together, which is fantastic, right? Their little brains are getting programmed with like positivity and empowering thoughts and like, I can do it. And so sometimes when they're in the car with me, if I've been listening to Joel for a while and I'm ready for something different, because come on, I like to have fun too. So I'll switch it over and they'll be like, hey, we're listening to Joel. So, all right. So yeah, we, uh, we listen to channel 128, which is the Joel Osteen channel. Yes, I'm so glad this is what you need. Okay, for Darren Hardy, um, you can sign up for the text. I don't know. Go to his website, probably darrenhardy.com, but it's super awesome. I love that. Okay. So this is something that I'm not good at. I'm not good at this, but I put it on my list. I actually last week's, um, last week's vlog chat like this, I talked about, I talked about how important it is to take care of you, self-care, self-love, how it's not selfish, how you've got to pour your, you've got to fill your cup. Otherwise you're just, it's just, Life is meant to be enjoyed, and if we're not taking care of us, if all we do is take care of others, if they're our focus, seriously, you just you can't you can't maintain that. And it's important we matter. It's important to fill our cup. It's important to take care of us. So I'm going to put that on my. This is part of my New Year's resolution: is to take time for me every single day. And I'm going to start small. So even if that means it's 10 minutes of me time, of painting my nails or doing something that's frivolous and not results oriented, I'm going to do it because I need to. So if that's where you're at, I'm gonna encourage you to add that onto your list too. Self-love, self-care. I'm not talking about firing up your AA batteries. I'm just talking about like 
taking time for you to fill your cup, to read a book for fun, to just do something, meet a friend for coffee, right? It doesn't have to be a huge time investment, 10 minutes a day, start small and create those little habits that you can continue to build on, right? Okay, so this goes back to my tip number two, um, which was putting on my workout clothes first thing. So I found in my life, especially with kids, like there's so much outside of my control, but I can control working out. And so I love working out. I didn't used to for a long time. I hated it. And I kind of did it kicking and screaming until I reframed it, that it was not only doing it for me, but I was doing it for my kids, right? It's a lesson I'm teaching them. It's important to move your body. It's never about being skinny. We don't ever say that word. It's all about being strong and feeling good and feeling confident. And I know the days I don't work out, even if nothing has changed in my diet, I feel gross and I feel bad and I beat myself up. And it's like so weird how your image, the way you look in the mirror is tied into your, into your thoughts. Seriously. So true. So the days I don't move my body, I usually feel a lot more stressed out and I'm really crabby. And for a long time I couldn't put my finger on it. And then I realized it was because I didn't move my body. So I do it every single day. I don't take rest days. I subscribe to Shailene um, Johnson's theory that you should only work out on the days you want to feel amazing. And I want to feel amazing every single day. I want to feel like I can kick ass every single day. And so some days are better than others. And I do take active recovery days. So I'm not saying to go out and like kill yourself every day because your body does need to rest. It does need to recover. And you have to listen to it, especially if you have an injury or anything like that. But even like, you know, a short walk around the neighborhood or playing tag with your kids or doing some gentle yoga, like it's important to move your day, to move your body every single day. So I do that no matter what, no matter what. I used to try and do rest days because I felt like it was important for myself, but I was a crabby bitch. Nobody likes that. So I'm like, okay, now I get it. It's an active recovery day and I just do something gentle, but I move my body every single day. No excuses. Even if we're traveling, you can stop and do some squats. You can stop and do jumping jacks. You can play tag with your kids. Like exercise shouldn't, it doesn't need to be like boring and yucky. Like it should be something that you should enjoy. It should be something that you love, right? It should make you happy. Totally. That's what I do every single day. This is something that, um, so this is kind of like moving to my end of day routine. I found that the state of my kitchen has a direct correlation with how my day will go. So if I get up in the morning and my there's still dishes from last night or there's stuff on the counters or, or all that, it's just like, like, I'm just in a bad mood. It's like I come out and I'm just like, ugh, I gotta do this, right? I don't get to just kind of gently ease into my day. Sounds weird. I guess it's the OCD in me. I don't know. But I found if I take a few extra minutes at night to like load the dishwasher and like rinse out the sink, and even maybe like get the coffee pot set up for the next morning, that is like the best feeling ever. It's like hope and Christmas morning all rolled into one. Like I can walk into my kitchen and it's clean, right? And so I feel, I, but I, I, I like my house clean. Like I'm weird that way. So anyways, this is something that I've finally figured out that I'm just going to do it. Even on the nights I'm too tired because it makes such a difference in the morning whether or not I feel like I can rock my day or whether or not I start out feeling overwhelmed and kind of pissed off. So that's something that I'm resolving to do. I am who I am. I like a clean kitchen. It makes me happy. <laughs> um, so I do that. And then I've been, I've been sharing about how I've been going to counseling because ugh, I'm human. Gasp. Who would have thought that, right? So I've been going to counseling. And um, one of the things that she talked to me about dealing with my stress and anxiety and feeling overwhelmed and all these other things that we are all struggle with as humans is meditation. And I know meditation is really important. I have all the bloggers, all the like podcast people, all the successful entrepreneurs, everyone says really successful people all have this in common and they meditate. And I just feel like I don't have time to meditate. Like there's stuff I need to get done. I'm, I am on a, I have a purpose. I need to get this shit done, get out of my way. But she's right. And I know when I meditate, when I take time to slow down, that it, it benefits me. And so I'm not where I want to be yet. Like I still really struggle with squirrel brain or like getting distracted, but it's something that I'm working on. It's, um, and I've actually been doing it in bed at night and I know that's not ideal, but some is better than none. Right. And you have to start somewhere. I'm not asking you to like be a total rock star, but start somewhere, start small, start where you can, because we're all different. And so I've been meditating at night in bed and it's really simple. Like I, I just start to concentrate on my breathing. I take one deep breath in, I hold it for, uh, I think I'll hold it for like two seconds and then I blow it out. And I do that. I do that until my breathing kind of calms. And sometimes it's really hard to slow down because I'm thinking about stuff. So she, my counselor suggested that you have a word you focus on. Like you think of one, like, so you, you know, if you have one word 
that you're focusing on, your brain can't be interjecting other things. That's been helpful. And then I just go through my body, which as a kid I did biofeedback, which is pretty freaking awesome. It's all about controlling your breathing and your stress reaction and stuff like that. Um, interesting story, National Geographic actually did, they like took photographs of me at, at Seattle's Children's Hospital when I was a kid doing biofeedback. It was pretty awesome. And for a long time I wanted to be a biofeedback technician, but whatever, that was once upon a time. So anyways, back to my story. So um, meditating, I just focus on, like I tense up my feet and then I take a deep breath and then I relax them. And I just move my way slowly at my body and I do that and I kind of meditate for a while. And if I don't fall asleep while I'm meditating, I like to do a gratitude dump in my brain and I used to do this when the kids were really small too and I was feeling like super pissed off and like angry and like everyone wanted a piece of me and I never had any time. It's so easy to get on that, on that, like that barrage of like everyone wants something from me and I never have, I can't even pee in peace. Like it's so easy, right? We all have those thoughts. I still have those thoughts, but you just have to take your, you have to take your thought process hostage and be like, redirect. No, I'm not going to think about that. So I started doing, I would go on gratitude runs because I was usually pretty frustrated and I would probably make it to the end of the block. I'm not saying I would go run for forever, but still like I would just get some energy out of my system and I would think about everything I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my iPhone. I'm grateful for my charger. I'm grateful I have tea. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that my kids are well. I'm grateful for my husband. Like all the things we have to be gra grateful for, they're so freaking much. And when you start to focus on that, when you start to think about that, it really does change your view of life. So I do a gratitude dump at the end of the night if I haven't already um, fallen asleep meditating, and then I pray. I'm, I like to pray, and um, I used to be one of those like desperate prayers, like, oh, please, God, please, God, keep my husband safe. Oh, God, please help this. Please, 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 right? And after listening to Joel and working on personal development and becoming a more confident, capable, less freaked the fuck out person, I realized that I don't need to pray like that anymore. I don't need to pray with like desperation and fear. And so I pray from a, a place of gratitude and I feel like it's just helped everything so much. You know, like I pray, I pray thank you. It's like, I'm thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this. Thank you for this hard because it's giving me an opportunity to see things differently. Thank you for this opportunity because it's shifting my life for you. Like you, if you change the way you think because you are directly in charge of that, it will change your life. So these are a few of the things that I do every single day because life happens, stuff gets chaotic and crazy, but this helps me feel like I've won my day. And at the end of the day, after I've done all these things, I'm like, you know what? My bed still might be covered in laundry and I might still have to pay this bill or whatever, but I've won my day. I've done the things I know I, I need to do to feel like I am a good mama and a good person and I can like conquer tomorrow because every day is a fresh start and it's all about just getting better every single day. So I hope these have helped you. Let me know if you're going to give it a try. If you haven't already liked my Facebook page, I would love it if you do that and follow my posts so you can see when I come live and share my little tidbits with you. Um, and your call to action is, is, is this, is to think about the things that you need to do to win your day. It doesn't have to be a big list. It could be shorter than mine, but just add one or two things on there. And if you're feeling like you need to take care of you, yourself more as well, come New Year's, come January, like there's no, no shame in that. Take care of you. Take care of you. Fill your cup. And if that means you need to move your body, move your body. If that means you need to have a play date with a friend without your kids, have a play date with your friend without your kids. It's okay. It's okay to take the time to paint a picture. It's okay to take the time to journal. It's okay to take the time to run to the end of the, of the block and do a gratitude dump. Like we have to give ourselves permission to take time for us. And if you really can't do that, if you just feel like you have all these things you have to do because you're this like martyr person for your family, flip it. Think in terms of I'm doing this to teach them a lesson and then it's no longer selfish. Now I'm doing something to help them. And that's how I shifted my whole like struggle with exercise and all these other things that I always used to view as negative. They're now positives because not only do I feel better, not only do I feel saner, not only am I making myself a better person, but I'm teaching them an important life lesson. So you, my friends, are the drivers of your bus. Make it a fantastic and amazing day. If you have any more questions, drop them below and I will respond to you. Enjoy your Friday. It's a fantastic day. And this is the last one in 2016. How freaking awesome is that? It's been an interesting year and 2017 is going to be that much better. You just have to decide to make it that way.